What's up guys, this is CJ, or Deadly Cyclone with the Strike YouTube channel. Uh, we're back again today, after last week, to do another Samsung device. Uh, it's a mini unboxing, I have already taken it out of the box, but we'll uh, go through what's in the box and then I'll show you a little bit about the phone. This is the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra 5G, which every phone they make this year is 5G of their main flagship line. So it probably won't mean a lot to most of us. I know here in Iowa we still don't have 5G. I think Des Moines is supposed to be getting it in the first wave, but that was supposed to happen last year, and we're still not there. So I think uh, the 5G, if you're getting a phone to keep for a good two or three years, I think eventually you'll be on that on that bandwidth and you'll be able to get the benefits of that but for right now not so much but this is the box uh, it's pretty standard it's a Samsung box it's matte black as usual um, not much anything interesting going on here so I'm just gonna take this part and once again they did this with the flip which you can check out the video of that on my channel right now but they keep hiding these little paper things up in the top and people keep missing them, so I'm going to set that over there. And really, in this one, like in the flip, there was um, there was an actual case for it, but I don't, we're definitely not going to get a case in this one. So there's your uh, tool for taking out SIM cards, which I said in the last video I, I like that they keep giving us, although I have a dozen of them now. Um, let's see what else we got in here. It looks like just papers, and they're kind of stuck in there, so uh, nothing else in there uh, off to the side. So, here you go. So, screen protector. They actually put this in here now because all the issues with the fold and not necessarily the flip, but um, I think they started doing this actually a couple of years ago. So the device itself has this like kind of scratch protector on the top that you could peel off if you want to, but it uh, it definitely is on there to help. Um, you can use a different screen protector. So if you're worried about dropping it, I would say definitely get a different one because this one's just more for like your keys. But um, like they tell you here, you can take it off and use a different one, but just make sure it's a proper one. Um, throw that over there. We've got our peripher quick reference guide and our Verizon stuff and all that junk that you always see. So this is, just has, you know, Samsung Pay, Google Duo, Photos, your initial settings. Um, I like that uh, Android's been doing this now where it's easy setup from either an iPhone or an Android. I actually, on the flip, I switched over from my iPhone and it actually pulled over a lot more than I thought it was going to. So that smart switch stuff is nice. Um, you got about your phone, you know, they added the micro SD back a couple years ago, so that's nice. There's a in-display fingerprint scanner, which I have yet to set up. Um, you know, USB port, USB-C, all your cameras, your SIM card tray, all that normal stuff. And then just your mobile apps and your premium care. That's pretty much that. So we'll go ahead and take this out of here. I'm just going to set it off to the side for now to scratch it and in the bottom we have another little cover this is Samsung and here we have our USB-C charger that fast charge super fast charging helps when I get the light on it so that should be pretty nice I'm trying to remember if they said this was exactly the 45 watt charger I don't think it is, but they do have a 45 watt charger that you can also buy, which will be even faster. So there's that you know, standard USB-C fun stuff, right? This looks like a little tiny cardboard house of some sorts that has nothing in it. Um, not a whole lot in these boxes anymore, man. This looks like your cable. Let's open that up. It seems like there's a lot of cardboard. Like, do you need this much for this? Like, could you just put a little wire around this and throw it? Anyways, um, this is just your USB-C cable, USB-C to USB-C. No more Type A's in there. 
I think uh, there might be an adapter in there still. Actually, I don't know if there is. They usually, you, if you have Sam's, Samsung phones in the past, you probably have about 20 of the USB-A to USB-C adapters, but I'll set that over there. And this looks like it might be it in the box. Get that in there. These are your AKG earbuds. Still one of my favorite collaborations that they're actually partnering with a company that offers really good sound and really good headphones to put in the box. And there's your USB-C because these are now USB-C only. There's no headphone jack. So love it or hate it, we're getting to that point where there are no more headphone jacks in the device. There are still phones out there if you like that. So, you know, and here's your extra ear tips. Um, as far as what's in the box, that's, you know, jokes aside, that's all that's in the box. So definitely no adapter, which is strange because I'm so used to having those everywhere. I'll set that up there. And then the device itself. So hopefully it doesn't have too many fingerprints and you're going to see me behind the camera again. But there's that beautiful, huge 6.8, I think, inch screen. Um, flip it over, very shiny, very fingerprint magnet. I had to wipe this thing off like multiple times already today. Um, you can see it's got that 100X on there, which it's, I'll show you in a minute. It's a cool feature, but you really can't get any kind of good photos with that. So it's funny that they put it on the back, but uh, that's, Kind of the device, I guess. So you've got on the side here, if I can get some uh, focus in here, you've got your power button and your volume rocker. And that was kind of the same with the Galaxy Flip. There, there wasn't much on there. But if you watch my Flip video, the power button was actually recessed because it was a fingerprint reader. And I didn't actually like that because I would always, my thumb would automatically hit the volume rocker instead. So kind of glad that it's not recessed on here, if you can see that. And on the other side is just basically nothing, absolutely nothing. And on the top, you got your SIM card slot and it looks like a little microphone, probably for noise cancellation. On the bottom, another microphone, your speaker grill, your USB-C port. So that's, I mean, that's the device itself. It's nice. I mean, it feels nice. I was surprised though because a lot of videos I watch that this is a really big phone, this is so huge, and then you know I get it, and it's not that much bigger than the iPhone 11 Pro Max I've been using for the last eight months. It's a, it's definitely taller, but it doesn't weigh that much either. I mean, it's it definitely feels like a Samsung device. It's a solid phone. It's solid metal and glass, but it feels good in the hand. Now, if you put a case on it. Um, that might make it a little bigger, it might be harder to fit in your pockets. For me, it still fits in my pocket, but, you know, depends on what kind of pants you wear, I guess. So, I'm going to go ahead and boot this thing up and just ignore if I have any notifications popping up right away. But, uh, you get that nice 5G logo on there for really no purpose unless you live in a downtown area of a giant city. And even then, based on some of the tests uh, other YouTubers like MKBHD have done, you have to be very close to those towers to get any kind of the, the high-end, you know, over a gig speeds. So most of, most of what you're going to see with 5G, it will be faster, but it's, it doesn't penetrate as well as 4G LTE has done in the past. So, so phone restarted. Let's see if we can unlock it here. I'm going to pop it over here, put my pin in, because you guys don't need to know that in case you ever find me. Getting the phone started up. There's my lovely, lovely Witcher 3 background. Shout out to the Reddit wallpapers threads for those. But that's the device, and you can see just how nice that screen is and how big that screen is. And it's just everything's just super quick to open, all the apps. And by default, this thing isn't set to the high refresh rate that it comes with standard, so I'll show you where you gotta go to do that. So a lot of people may get it and be like, this doesn't seem any faster, that's because by default it's not. But if you go into, if I click the right button, display, 
and motion smoothness, you can see here that there's that high refresh rate. So initially it's set to 60 hertz. You definitely want to switch it to 120. I think that's one of the best features of this phone is just how smooth everything is on 120. And with that, your screen resolution is set to 2400 by 1080. Um, if you turn the high refresh rate back down to 60, you can go all the way up to that 3200 by 1440. But on the 120 hertz refresh rate, the highest resolution you can do is that 2400 by 1080. But I find it looks fine, like it looks super crisp. I mean, you guys can see it from here. I know you're seeing it through a screen, but it it looks sharp. It's I, I don't think I'm missing out much. And the refresh rate that you get just scrolling through stuff. If I were to open Twitter here and just scrolling, and I know this is a funny demo to do because depending on what screen you're watching this on, you may not notice it, but it, everything's just super quick and super smooth when you're scrolling through different apps and you're just... So you may have noticed I switched directions. That's because I ran out of space on my iPhone. There's a joke there somewhere if somebody wants to make it, I'm sure. But I think what I was last doing was scrolling through, and let me put this in, Twitter just to show you guys the screen and how good the 240 hertz, or not 240, that would be amazing, the 120 hertz refresh is. And as I showed here, you can scroll through pretty quickly. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show off, and I know a lot of videos have mentioned this, but let's see if we can get closer here. If you hit the icon there, there's this keep open for quick launching. And what that does is it pins the app into the RAM, so into the active memory. And what that enables you to do is your phone won't shut down your app if you go away from it for a while. So there's a lot of times when I've been writing an email and I have to go look up something on the web or whatnot, and I come back and my email software is closed because it took it out of RAM and there was not enough RAM. So in order to combat that, they added that pin to memory, and that just enables that app to stay open all the time for good. So I'm curious to see how eventually that affects the RAM if it does, or affects the battery life or anything like that. But it's a nice feature to have, and this phone definitely has enough RAM to, uh, to satisfy the need for it. So um, you may not even need to use it, I guess, given the, the amount of RAM in the phone. But overall, I think it's a nice feature to have. So that's, that's just kind of an overview. I might see if I can do a little video with the phone itself and throw it up on the channel as well. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll try to keep using this thing and try to give you guys an update. If there's any specific questions you have about the device or about what it can do and what the zoom looks like, if I show you that real quick because it's ridiculous. Um, you can see as you start to zoom in here, you've got your 100 times zoom, which... You know, it's just pointless. It's nice that it shows you where you're at. So even if I like point out into my hallway here, I can't even, I can barely even tell what I'm looking at. It's just a dark hallway, so you're not going to see much. But so you've got that zoom that goes all the way in and then all the way back out and then out even further. So that's nice. But anyways, if you guys have anything specific you want me to take a look at, on the device or show on a video, I can definitely do that. But overall, uh, first impressions, it's a very solid device. The screen is fantastic. I know there's some issues with the autofocus on the video itself, and I think Samsung's going to put out a uh, put out a patch that hopefully helps that. So we'll see how that does. I did notice a few issues when I was filming some stuff with it. But um, other than that, it's expensive. It's around $1,400, I want to say. Um, there are other options. You can get the Galaxy S20 or the S20 Plus, which obviously don't have the crazy specs this has, but have enough that it's probably great for 99% of people. But for the power user, this is a power device, and it's big, and it's got all the memory, and it's got all the specs, and the giant camera, and the sensors, and anything you could possibly want. So if that sounds good to you, I wouldn't have a hard time recommending the phone. 
Um, it's going to take me a little bit longer just to see how much I like it in day-to-day -day use, but that's kind of it for now. So if you guys have anything, um, go ahead and subscribe and then leave some comments and I can definitely answer some stuff down in the questions or in the comments area. Um, if there's anything you want to see on video, just let me know and I will show that as well. But that's, uh, that's the device. That's the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra 5G, which is a mouthful. So, uh, like I said, be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, let me know if there's anything you want to see. Thanks for watching again, guys.